Welcome to the comic shop, where you get your weekly dose of everything nerdy. Today on the comic shop, we'll be talking about continuity in comics and sweet unseen movies. As always, I'm your host, Eugene Kappen, with... Pat Mast. And when we say sweet, sometimes we mean sweet sweet in the way, oh my god, this movie is awesomely bad. So you're going to get a dose of both sides of the spectrum on that one, for sure. So, it'll be good stuff. we got some good ones and bad ones. The the specific film? Yes, the specific film. It is a <laughs> it's a, 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 a special subset. Yeah. Um, English your first language? No, no. Well, in that case, you speak it very well. Well, thank you, thank yeah. you. Anyway, Pat, how was your week? Oh, it was pretty good, pretty good. Not too shabby. Celebrated the birthday, went very well, and yeah, glad to be here doing what we do, doing what we do best. Oh, you know what? I had fun at your birthday, man. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's what, that's all I wanted was just a lot uh, of a lot of hipsters and indie kids. Oh yeah, it's Seattle, and, Seattle area. And then there was always like that one really awkwardly uh, like dressed business guy who was just like not really dancing, but he was like kind of moving, trying to fit in. I think I know who you're talking about. I'm actually didn't really invite invite him per se. He kind of came with someone else, but no big deal. I don't know. The guy I was talking about wasn't even part of our group. It was just some guy who randomly oh. showed up to the bar. He was always like at the forefront of where our group was, and he just looked so out of place. It was like um, I'm not sure who I know you're talking about. Then I can't. I don't remember. You know what? By that point, I'm pretty sure you were uh, gone mentally. Yeah. No. It was. Uh, it was a good birthday. Uh, appreciated everyone who came out. So, but yeah, continuity in comics. Might not seem like a very sexy subject, but it's pretty important when it comes to the overall st- art of storytelling. You know. You know what? Nothing pisses me off than bad continuity. Mm-hmm. I mean, if if you're a longtime listener to a specific um, TV show or um, if or a series of movies, or you know, in our case, you know, a follower of certain comic book genres. You know, there's there's nothing worse than, you know, having one comic book completely contradict another. And, you know, what are what are some great examples of that? Well, probably the the first and easiest one to talk about is uh, the One More Day storyline with Spider-Man. Essentially, the powers that be at Marvel wanted to make Peter a single struggling guy again. They felt like he was getting too too comfortable in married life and it was taking away from some great storytelling aspects and something that always had been kind of at the heart of the Peter Parker character. So they devised this uh, story where in the post-Civil War, Civil War storyline, Aunt May gets uh, shot, and to save her life, Peter and Mary Jane sacrifice their marriage to the demon Mephisto, who is essentially the Satan of the Marvel Universe. The big kicker, neither of them will remember their marriage. So that's kind of interesting. It essentially erases that part of their history. They look at it the way they got married in the late 80s, and when that happened, their lives took a certain path, and that expanded into the future and other stories that came about. Oh, this rea- That was their reality. By going back and taking away their marriage, they're now on a different, different path, which expands over time and over time, which is why they reached the point they did. So it essentially ripped up and undid a lot of stuff. Isn't the Kingpin responsible for killing Aunt May? Like, he hired an assassin? Yeah, yeah. Hired an assassin. And, and that was directly after the, uh, the great unmasking of Spider-Man, wasn't it? Yes, as, as, uh, that's what my recollection is. Yeah, he unmasked for, for the Civil War storyline, and obviously he became a target after I'm, that. I'm just going to blame uh, Tony Stark on that one. Yeah, that's kind of on you, Tony. Yeah, what a dick. So, yeah, I mean, continuity, I think it's important. I think, you know, the story ma- matters... It rewards loyal reading. It makes the writing matter. Everything has a purpose. It can be used to build great long-term story arcs and great development of characters. And I think with the internet, you can research and look up the histories of these characters through the main websites or even fan sites. And a lot of trade paperbacks come out now collecting archives and great storylines. And 
They have little forewords and afterwards that kind of explain the lead up before and after. So I think in today's world, I'm okay with there being these big continuities and long histories because I think you can catch up. You can you can still dive in there and be right there with, with the characters, I think. I think in today's society, writers are making more of an effort to kind of keep the continuity, you know, steady. The fans will hold them responsible. Oh my god. Guys like, like you? Like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, where we just get on the blogs and just start going, oh my god, this comic book sucks. I could see and- it ruining your day. <laughs> like Eugene is going to put Eugene said on Facebook and he won't he'll be gone for days if they screwed up X-Men for you I could totally see that or Spider-Man for you oh yeah we're talking sawed off shotguns and a bottle of whiskey please console me I am on the edge right now <laughs> whenever he goes into like that really deep depression mode I like to call him Ben Affleck Got, oh you got Affleck or Ben uh. Affleck's career <laughs> oh Ben We'll be talking about him a little bit later, actually. Our, our good friend, Mr. Ben Affleck. Yeah, we will. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously there are some cons when it comes to these large backstories and continuities with characters. I mean, if it's poorly done, you can feel like the stories get kind of cluttered and confusing, and it can be kind of intimidating to new readers, and, and you can feel like it kind of dates a character. I mean, God, Peter Parker, he's been around... For like 50 years and he's married and it's just like is that going to be exciting to a new young reader you know what mm, maybe not you know what? i think if you're a new young reader you should probably start with a comic book that hasn't been out for very long that that way as the comic book progresses so will the reader that's true and i mean i think that's part of why they did the marvel ultimate universe they restarted Everything in the year 2000, it's separate from the main Marvel Universe. Same spirit and tone as the originals, but fresh perspectives and origins for the current times. So I think that's kind of a great way to have it have it both ways, to have your cake and eat it too. You know, you still got their traditional continuity, but you got something kind of new and different. So Or um, off-branched uh, comic books. Yeah. Like um, The Runaways mm-hmm. is a great um, series that kind of plays off the whole X-Men aspect. Yeah. Yeah. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. DC recently decided, you know what? It's 2011. These characters have been around for so long. We have reached the point where we're just going to hit the restart button. Starting later this summer, every character, fresh, you know, modern or origin stories and slightly altered costumes and restarting everything with issue one. Not just an, oh, it's an issue one, but it's really like issue 630. It's truly ones across the board starting everything over with a fresh new take does that excite you at all because i'm pretty pumped about it you know a little bit jeff john i'm 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 kind of interested in how they're gonna play because i hear a lot of um it's a lot of the costumes are just changing and not not so much being like less patriotic or you know whatever it's it's just i guess they're going with a slightly grittier angle yeah and it's not like you can still you know maintain the spirit and the tone of the original costumes, but you can kind of just make it fresher and update it, like they did with Captain America in the Ultimate Universe. You know, it was just little subtle changes, little things here and there that kind of made it feel a little more, a little more real for our generation now. But it's still got that classic red, white, and blue look going. Take for off it. the ears. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to read uh, the the new Justice League that Jeff Johns is going to be writing coming out in August. I want to see how that group acts in today's modern society. I want to see Batman. And Green Lantern, you know, at odds with each other. That's going to be awesome. I want to see how all the classic death um, comics, like, you know, the death of Superman, the death of uh, Green Arrow, how those are replayed in this new universe. Or will they even go on those, go those routes? Will they completely alter those in different ways? I mean, there's a lot you can do there. And I think it's going to be pretty exciting. DC's, when they release stuff, it's going to be online and in physical paper form on the same day. Uh, Marvel's already putting a lot of their stuff up online, so it's exciting time. Exciting you know, times. you know the great thing about digital comics over uh, paper comics, it it basically stops you from quickly going to the back page and finding out what happens at the end. True, true. You know, it it basically you know guides you forward like uh, a good set of um, digital mechanics should. Yeah, so I've been kind of. I do both. You know, I like to still buy my stuff, you know, the trades in person, but I've also got an online subscription, which I use here and there to look up some, I use that a lot to look up some older issues that I can't get in trades. 
and then read the, some of the new stuff right when it comes out. So I, I don't think people will just be doing exclusively one or the other. I think be kind of doing both. You know? Will you sell me your password? No. It All is right. super secret. Yeah, Marvel subscription, 10 bucks a month, unlimited access to their digital content. I think it's worth it. It's been worth it so far. Wait, wait to give uh, Marvel a, a little plug, plug, a there. plug there. Free plug, Marvel. You're welcome. So Hint, hint, you should sponsor us. <laughs> sponsor us, please. Um, I got one more example of someone who really took a great... Took their time in doing some great continuity. If you've read Green Lantern and all, there was a lot of stuff with uh, Hal Jordan in the 90s becoming Parallax and then being merged with uh, the Spectre, their souls and stuff, and essentially became a bad guy. But Jeff Johns brought him back with a storyline called Rebirth in 2005. And it wasn't just some, like, crappy throw together, oh, he's kind of back thing. Like, he was so meticulous. He explained everything from why the, the yellow is the ring doesn't work against yellow. Like, he thoroughly explained that it wasn't just like, oh, because it's yellow. Okay, why? He explained why Hal Jordan even got gray hair, you know, in the 90s. That was never really explained. He just all of a sudden started to gray. And he wasn't even that old yet. So just all that kind of little stuff Jeff Johns did. And it's fantastic. He was so meticulous. Love it. Great for the fans. Anyways... When it comes to continuity, you know the comic shop is all about it. We got all our stuff up on the web in order. We're succinct. We're, we're bringing it to you in order, so we know you appreciate that. Check out the YouTube channel and the Twitter and the Facebook. We're going to take a little break, and we're going to come back and talk about some awesome movies, or would you say some, some bad movies? Some sweet unseen movies. Sweet unseen? You're saying sweet? I'm saying some sweet and some sour. You know what? I, I love B movies, and you know what? That's what we're going to get into. You got some good ones. I got some crap on my list, but we're going to we're going to get into it real good. <laughs> it's going to be fun. You will. Inside. The connection.